sure everyone's tired. Uh, this is a work in progress kind of a paper uh, that we are working, but uh, we have the first cut kind of results, uh, which looks at growth and productivity in the socialist regime, India and Russia. Uh, the paper is structured as follows. We have a very short review of literature, uh, data and methodology, sources of growth in Russia and India, and, and a short summary and conclusion. So why do we compare uh, the two countries that we have listed out? Uh, our main argument in the paper is that in the 80s and 90s, uh, more in the 90s, both, uh, both of these countries underwent changes in economic policies from central planning to trade-driven economies. And also further, Russia, India, and to a large extent China have been labeled, uh, their, their transformation of the economies have been labeled as the major events of the 90s. And against the uh, backdrop of this kind of a scenario which is existing, uh, we thought it's important uh, to undertake a comparative study on India-Russia, a comparison of sources of growth, so that we get important insights in the context of the growth dynamics of the two economies, etc. So, oh, sorry, what did I do? Yeah. Uh, the review of literature, of course, uh, if you see the review of literature, it's, it's Jorgensen all over. <laughs> and, and also, to a large extent, these are dated by now. And uh, US, Japan have always been a very important uh, studies of Japan, uh, Japan, US mostly, some studies on international comparisons, uh, Germany, etc. But it's, it's essentially, my point is that it's essentially uh, around uh, uh, US, Japan comparison on productivity and very, very, very good studies. Uh, the, the last one assessing India's uh, industrial, uh, Japan's competitiveness with uh, Korea, Taiwan. Now, the important point in not going deeper into these reviews, but at least mentioning these studies, was that very significant work has come out, or very significant issues have come out from comparative perspectives. Why Europe lagged behind American productivity resurgence in 90? We have the famous book, Timur et al., Economic Growth in Europe. Then there's a paper by Kotz, 2000, Lessons of Economic Transition from China, Russia, and uh, uh, China, India, uh, Recent Patterns of uh, Changes in Comparative Political Economy by Pranab Bhardhan. I have not listed here, but we are, uh, I have been also a co-author of a recent paper using Clem's data set on India, China. Uh, also very importantly, uh, that uh, Clem's data set uh, allows uh, is based to give you an inter international comparative perspective, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Barbara's sitting here, Kristen's here. I haven't seen too many comparative studies yet because they have their own problems of concordance between different industry level and things like that. We made an attempt last year with China, with Harry Wu, and uh, sort of when this paper gets more, uh, uh, it will be another important milestone. So uh, comparing Russia and India, I've listed uh, two important studies here. Uh, there's a study uh, by Goldar, which has looked into uh, productivity patterns in the Indian economy, again, a period 1980 to 2015, using Clem's data set, and, and certain results are uh, projected uh, growth accelerated from 80 to 93 to around 5.8% to 7.5%, and another by uh, Ilya, which also observed multi-factor slowdown started in Russia a few years before the crisis uh, in terms of major economy. So this is the starting point that there are two prominent background uh, studies on Russia and India. Now, what are we uh, trying to do here? Uh, using the CLEMS data set compiled for both India and Russia, Russia CLEMS and India CLEMS, we examined the period 95 to 2015, 20 years since the advent of reforms and global integration. 1995 is chosen because the Russia claims data starts from 1995. The India claims data uh, comes uh, since 1980. Uh, so we, we believe the paper offers some important insights. The first study at a detailed industry level, India with Russia. Use, again, using claims data set, two very rich India-Russia claims data set. Uh, uh, the Jorgensen methodology, which allows you to look at the sources of growth at aggregate as well as disaggregate level. And, uh, of course, we do believe that industry-level perspective allows a better understanding of the growth dynamics. So th those are important uh, uh, things to list. So the data set, uh, the India claims data set is an ongoing process. Uh, 
the latest version we have used is version 2018, and the Russia data set, thanks to Ilya, is uh, version 2017. And uh, yeah, this is the one that uh, we got from Ilya, thanks to him. And uh, of course, the India claims data set provides uh, date time series data on value added, uh, gross output, uh, number of employment, labor quality, capital stock, as well as services, energy, materials, uh, income share, etc. Uh, and the Russia claims data set, it's, it's available in the paper, a little bit that we've written about it. So what do we do to ensure that we get some numbers out? We construct a concordance table between India claims data and Russia claims to arrive at a comparable 27 sectors. Uh, the Russia claims is 34 sectors, India claims is 27, so we map on the Russia claims to India. Uh, uh, for this paper, we have combined some industries, uh, the subsectors of textile, textile products, leather, footwear, uh, et cetera to get a comparable a data set. Of course, uh, we use the famous uh, Jorgensen uh, from any 1987 paper, which is the growth accounting methodology. But uh, here, we, we're mostly working on value-added approach and not the CLEMS that way. But we intend to, as a step two, get into the CLEMS framework. So here it is. Uh, contribution of employment and labor productivity to value-added growth. Uh, left-hand side India and, and uh, right-hand side Russia. Uh, we've looked at the period 1995 to 2014, which is again split into 95 to 2008 and 2010 to 2014 to just give you a pre-post kind of an indicator. Now, if you see the gray and the blues here, uh, the comment that is important here is that it, given, India's, uh, given its lower income base and larger catch-up potential, in Output growth has been higher than Russia by almost three percentage point, uh, uh, varying in the first period about uh, 3.6. The economy grew at an annual rate of 6.7 percent, whereas uh, the Russian economy has since. So we have more or less that's the relative uh, scenario. So then we go into capital deepening and total factor productivity, and uh, of course uh, both the data sets are using capital service and not capital stock. And here, if you see the yellow with the gray bars. Uh, you can see that uh, TFP growth has slowed both has slowed in the post-crisis period in both countries. But the magnitude of decline, uh, we believe with the data here, has been much more pronounced in Russia. While the aggregate economy TFP number has slowed to about 1.2% per annum to about 0 0.7, it's declined, uh, if you can see, 2.7. The story remains unchanged even if we exclude uh, mining economy, mining sector from the total. That's an observation we make here. From this, the paper gets into the value-added growth rates in India and Russia. And uh, actually, what I feel right now, looking at it, we should have given a small column on the value-added share of every sector. But then, um, now, output growth has been higher in India uh, in all sectors except in wood and wood product, financial services, and, and other. Now, I must here say, for those of you who are very curious number-wise, that in India, we, we, are, we are having some uneasiness in the wood and wood sector. There may be some concordance or something, and it's not, it's, it crops up everywhere uh, as a sore can. The largest difference has been telecom. Now, it's a, it's a known story, and even our claim sector has, uh, uh, by and large, uh, said, uh, by and large, pointed out that uh, India is a case of service driven growth bypassing the conventional kind of manufacturing bypass, and telecoms within service have been really massive. Uh, other sectors where India has had impressive growth uh, compared to Russia, business services, transport equipment, public administrative utilities, uh, while the differences were smaller in certain other sectors. Uh, the picture changed across the two periods, while India had higher growth in all sectors, uh, except the one that I mentioned before. In the first period, there have been many more sectors where India did worse than Russia in the post-crisis year. And, and, and some of those sectors here are, are listed out. And if you, can, if you look into the numbers yourself, uh, you can see that the total economy rate 6.7 uh, compared to Russia 3.6. If you look at the agriculture, 3.1, 1.4, and industry 6.4, 2.3. I'm talking about the whole period here. Of course, you can, the paper is available on the RO website. You can see the numbers for yourself. Employment growth, uh, again, we look at number of, uh, a total number of workers, uh, employment. In terms of job creation, that's, where you, that's the term we keep talking about in the Indian economy. India's had an edge in both periods in most sectors. 
except in utilities, trade, and government services, and agriculture. In Russia, post-crisis job growth has generally been weak in the industrial sector. And in the service sector, job creation in India was fairly high by and large in, in business services in both the periods. And that's as far as the uh, employment uh, growth is concerned. We then look into labor productivity. Unfortunately, this paper only, only talks about labor productivity between the two economies and, and, and sources of labor productivity growth. Uh, these dynamics in output and employment boils down to weaker labor productivity in most manufacturing sectors in India compared to Russia. Uh, the, uh, in the service sector, India maintained a high growth in all sectors in the second period, which is uh, uh, 2010 to 2014, while it had low productivity in financial, business, and other. Uh, no sector in India had negative productivity, while the government sector in Russia has been negative productivity in both periods. Labor productivity declined in most sectors in Russia in the post-crisis period. Notable exceptions were transport. Uh, rubber, plastics, wood, other manufacturing utilities. In all these sectors, productivity range is about 1% to 7%. Uh, within the industrial sector, the biggest declines were in construction, if you, if, you, if you can take it within or outside, electrical equipment, refining, mining. The decline in services was more prominent in business, which lost nearly all its 10% productivity, followed by others. So this is about the overall labor productivity scenario. Uh, on a comparative between the two economies. Then we go into the sources of uh, labor productivity growth. We've already listed the labor productivity here. We then decompose this into capital and TFP uh, for the entire 27 sectors, including uh, three different time periods, the overall time period, and, uh, and uh, there, there are variations across sector, there are variations over time, and uh, they, they, they have a story by themselves. Finally, this is my final chart. We look at TFP growth in Indian industries and in the Russian uh, economy. Uh, we provide scatter plot of TFP, respectively, in India and Russia. On the x-axis, we look at the, sec uh, the first period. On the y-axis, we look at the, uh, the more recent period. And though we are higher productivity in the post-crisis years compared to the pre-crisis degree. This is, again, a snapshot of the prevailing scenario between um, India, Russia in terms of TFP growth. Unfortunately, this, these are, are, most of the things in the paper are descriptive. We, we, as the next step, we get to the analysis of what's actually um, gone wrong. And this is where we expect Ilya to join on board uh, with the paper to provide us uh, with uh, something. Anyway, so summing up, uh, the paper compared output, employment, labor productivity, capital, pretty much what you have in a menu on when you do growth accounting and total factor productivity. Uh, uh, on, an, on a comparative basis, output growth higher in Russia, which is, uh, we claim, not a, unexpected because it's a larger potential to catch up. Uh, in both the uh, economies, uh, labor productivity and job have declined over the two time period, with the decline being more pronounced uh, here. Uh, was driven by declining TP, although there are differences across sector, as I said, on the relative importance. Uh, uh, the service sector, which has had the highest share in overall GDP in both countries, has shown relatively faster output growth in both countries in the first period, that's the pre-crisis. But the sector has slowed down in the post-period in both countries, with the slowdown being more prominent in uh, Russia. So that's about uh, a very, very kind of a snapshot of what's happening in India, what's happening in Russia. And uh, as a future research, we get into now examining in detail what's driving productivity growth in different sectors, or how's the uh, sources of labor productivity growth coming up, et cetera. Thanks, Andrew. I okay, hope thank you very good. much. And uh, our final speaker of the day, uh, Barbara, as a discussion. Okay. Yeah. Ow. Yep. <laughs> okay, back again to one of my favorite topics. So first, a few relatively minor comments, and then I'm really going to talk about presentation, not uh, the methodology. So in the beginning, it says that for India, I think they were the employee uh, measure, and I think Russia was the full-time equivalent, but it doesn't make any difference with which was which. I frankly don't know when you're doing employees. Let's suppose you have somebody who works 10 hours a week, 
and somebody who works 40 hours a week. Is that counted as two employees? Where if you do full-time equivalent, usually a part-timer counts as 20 hours a week. So in one case, you would have um, 1.5 as your denominator, um, and in the other case, you would have two. You know, so I'd, I'd like to see some comments on um, how that can change labor productivity when you have um, the labor information on two different bases. Then there was this line um, relating to Russia. And I wasn't really sure what they meant by this line. What you typically do in a clums type model is that you're doing a weighted rate of growth. Um, the growth comes from the stock, real. The weights are the average nominal share of capital services between two periods. Now, I wasn't sure if this sentence was telling me that what they did instead of nominal shares um, as the weights, the average, that they were using the nominal capital stock in their weight. I just couldn't tell that. Whoops, wrong way, wrong way. How did I go that way? Uh, the aggregate multi-factor productivity, um, they're creating it by summing up across sectors using the share of um, uh, value added um, applied to your sectoral um, multi-factor productivity. Now they can't do a reallocation uh, story like we did in the 1987 book because you need intermediate input. But they could do an aggregate production function. Now to backtrack a little bit, when you do the sectoral where you can assume that the production functions differ by industry compared to an aggregate where everybody's got the same production function, um, you, can, you can decide if it makes a difference. Here you can't do that because you don't have intermediate input, but they could do aggregate uh, a production function to see if, if, if it would tell them something different. Um, now, it, I keep going the wrong way. Um, now, how do I critique this paper, right? I mean, it's using methodology I strongly favor. I remember that 45 years ago, I did the very first CLEM. There was no S. Um, and uh, I didn't continue productivity for two reasons. At BEA, for a very good reason, I wasn't allowed to do productivity. And when I left, BEA, the Bureau of Economic Analysis in 2005, a somewhat strange government lawyer said that I could never in the rest of my career work on productivity. Huh? True. So I went to human capital, and that worked out really, really well, but I love productivity. Um, so I'm going to talk about how to present the results, uh, and they'll get into the analysis. It's the database, I can't complain about it. Ilya's done a tremendous job. India's been working on it, the Indians, who I, I, I don't co-author with them, but I would say I collude with them pretty regularly, <laughs> right? Um, that's the way it goes. But so first I'm starting out with figure one. Um, now, this one breaks out um, the component into employment growth versus labor productivity growth. But then there's a second figure that um, breaks out the, um, the, the pieces uh, again into two pieces. And I kept going back and forth between the two figures. What I want is one figure that has the employment, capital deepening, total factor productivity, um, and the labor productivity, you know, everything together. This is the same equation that I put up earlier in my discussion where you can relate labor productivity to multi-factor productivity and see the various components and you can break it out by hours and all kinds of different types of capital. So I want to see them on, on one uh, graph. Um, and flip the bars the other way. I'm just showing an example of flipping the bars. Clearly this graph I'm going to show you is measuring something different. But, you know, I find it a lot easier to go up and down, and clearly you would have enough room, even though you have various sub-periods, because you only have two countries. It can be done. So I could deal with this better than going like this uh, across the way. So I would do that um, to make it uh, easier to uh, understand. 
Um, this paper had numbers, 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 numbers. I love numbers. I, I don't like writing. But uh, at some point, I got number fatigue. <laughs> if I had read another number, you know, without understanding what it meant, um, you know, I, I didn't jump to the conclusion, but I was so tempted. The good news is in the conclusion, they made general statements. But you can do it in the body of the paper, too. There's the old rule. You repeat something three times, and maybe you get the message across. Of course, it's useful for students. But so they could organize it better in the body. And, and you know, Deb is nodding his head. I'm sure he knew that. But they did the hard work. The hard work uh, was uh, doing the data. My next presentation, I liked this graph a lot. There was one, you saw them, one for Russia, one for India. It was very easy to read it, you know, above and below the line. Um, if you did a similar thing um, for the table that has the industry detail, um, now you couldn't put both India and Russia on the same graph. It would be too messy. I mean, as it was, it was pretty hard to get all the industries on this graph, but they did it. Um, but you know, I want more figures like the figure three. So instead of looking at this column of whatever there was, 34 sectors, I forget, yeah. um, that you could kind of get a sense of who was doing better, which industries were doing better versus those uh, that weren't doing as well. Um, so my suggestions might not work, but they need to play around with presentation. Um, how you do it is so important. It's not just to do it. Um, so you've got the estimates. Um, so I would, even before you try to do the analytics, I would get your presentation um, such that people find it much easier to be able to tell what um, the numbers mean. Um, and so, you know, it's, this is a, a short comment, but again, it's kind of hard for me to criticize something that, well, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I published Clem in 1980. It's kind of hard to say I think it was a really bad idea. It's not, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Barbara. Okay, so uh, now we have time for uh, comments oh, yeah, and questions right. on the paper. Right. Who would like to, uh, uh, any questions, comments? Uh, yeah, yes, they, go ahead, Marshall. They're ready to go home, except for Marshall. This one. Yeah, I was, you know, I'm sure you've thought about it. There's some really kind of low outliers in India. You mentioned wood products, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. A lot of industrial kind of things didn't, they look suspiciously low. I don't, especially in the second period, right? Am I rubber, I think, chemicals? I can't yeah. remember. I don't know if you gave any thought to this because it's, it's maybe the deflators or something like that. No, I think uh, uh, wood I know we're facing problem. <laughs> uh, but I guess the others are doing what the data so shows. We, we, as far as the deflators I mean, and stuff like that, but probably they, they have reasons to be there. But I would definitely check your comments <laughs> again. But as of now, I think they, they, they are... Uh, oh, the numbers are speaking for themselves, yeah, but 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 really but, true, uh, yeah. but I'll, I would I would definitely go with as Barbara says with so much of numbers, <laughs> right and left, right. top and below, right. okay. you, you're bound to make some mistakes somewhere or the other. Okay, um, other <laughs> additional questions? Uh, did you want to comment, uh, uh, Deb? Did you make want to yeah. respond? I accept all of Barbara's comments. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. It's just that I think the vertical, the horizontal looks better than the vertical. Oh, okay. You at least okay. know that your That's TFP is that big. Yeah. And your <laughs> capital evening is late. But, but all of them will be. This, uh, of course, as I mentioned, Ilya, you were not here. The paper is waiting for Ilya to come on board and sort the Russian story. Oh. And I guess we will, uh, we, we will be working on that. But uh, it's, a, it's a good beginning. We, I mean, we're yeah, very yeah. happy that we made an India claim. We made one with China, yeah. and yeah. now we're getting to uh, the Russian. And I accept Barbara's comments that uh, those numbers presentation will all be taken care of. Okay. <laughs> there, there is a data fit. We right have here. a question back there. Go ahead. I have one ready. Oh, not again. Uh, <laughs> uh, this paper has taken into account the change, it's a price level adjustment. Uh, in computing the uh, value-added approach to growth. 
has has the paper taken into account the price level adjustment process in computing the value added to growth yes yes we we we, we follow the claims methodology and i i can vouch it's perfect <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe right. you need to go back and see for see the claims uh, uh, the frame that yeah. thing what you're saying we've taken care of okay are there any other